Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Pat Bryan from UCOR. How are you today? Doing well, Tracy. How are you? I am so delighted by the news flow for UCOR. And of course, after the G7, you announced a number of items, including the vacuum schmelz steel. Let's start there. Well, you know, when you look at the supply chain and downstream, you've got various magnet makers that you can interact with for your product to go to, your rare earth oxides that we're producing, heavy in particular, Louisiana is focused on heavy rare earth. And, and actually um, in a, a new entry, which we'll talk about in a minute, I'm sure is the Samarium gadolinium and Samarium being the uh, most critically vulnerable rare earth or yeah, the most critically vulnerable uh, critical mineral. And, uh, and that too is important to the vacuum smelts relationship. Um, as we looked at the downstream magnet makers, you know, there are a few that are up and coming and, and uh, doing well. Um, Japanese magnet makers are well skilled and we, we do have some interaction there that you'll hear about in the future in our news flow. But um, most specifically with vacuum smelts, we have been dealing with them for a number of months and looking at their samarium, um, uh, samarium cobalt magnets that they make in Germany, as well as their permanent magnets, um, neodymium iron boron magnets that they make in Germany. And then most importantly, the Department of War funded uh, project in South Carolina, where they're uh, making permanent magnets there. And they're looking to ramp that up in a very substantial way. And of course, we're funded by the Department of War. They're funded by the Department of War. So it makes a, a, a good connectivity to, to, to look at that relationship and move it forward. So we signed... Um, in light of the MOU uh, that we signed, it was more of a G7. Let, let's get the news out at the G7. It's an important alliance between Canada, the USA, and Germany, sort of three countries connecting here. And uh, with that news uh, flow, we'll move to a definitive agreement fairly quickly, but we wanted to at least let uh, our shareholders and G7 entries uh, or G7 participants know that we had um, that relationship coming together. So we're very pleased. And of course, the competitive technology you have of Rapid SX was undoubtedly one of the compelling reasons the steel came together. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think the the thing that vacuum smelt saw was the nimbleness of what we can do. And by nimble, I mean, you know, when you have a solvent extraction plant, uh, it's a massive scale of uh, takes time to get the equilibrium, meaning chemical balance. And uh, if you try to switch from one particular uh, uh, product to another, it can take uh, weeks to get that done because you have to reset the whole system. Whereas with Rapid SX, uh, not only is your throughput 70% better than a solvent extraction system and you're doing it with 60% less footprint, but your time to equilibrium is literally hours, maybe a day. And so if you're looking to target something very specific like uh, samarium or gadolinium, you can actually do that. You can do it economically. You can chase that particular uh, group of vulnerable rare earth uh, min uh, minerals and, and you can um, make it happen for someone like vacuum spells that needs, needs that samarium for their samarium cobalt magnet manufacturing. We've been talking for years, Pat, about how when people talk about rare earths, they want to just pigeonhole it in mining when this is really about technology. And with that technology, in addition to the Department of War, the Canadian federal government has come behind you with a conditional approval for 36.3 million. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we've been we've had a program with Canada for four point three million dollars to again just run many hours on our demo plant. We similarly had a four million dollar U.S. program to run many hours on our demo plant. One was for heavy, one was for light, and they were working together, complementing each other. Then the U.S. stepped up with uh, an additional eighteen point four million and said, "Get going on your stage one, Louisiana." Because they were pleased with the uh, metrics that we we're delivering and, and the comparison to solvent extraction said this this tech is really where it needs to be. And Canada, likewise, said, you know, it's our turn to step up. And, and as they looked at the um, heavy earth that we're looking to process in Louisiana, they realized that there's a real vulnerability. It was the April banned rare earth uh, program with China that included samarium and gadolinium and, and defense applications, whether it's a, you know, Virginia class submarine or uh, an F-35 fighter or a destroyer, it, it's all samarium cobalt magnets because they hold their magnetization at really high temperatures. But that samarium in the Western world is not available. And that's why that vulnerability was announced recently by the US Geological Survey. It's also why Forbes came out with a big article that said our vulnerability is actually samarium. We had seen that coming about um, nine months ago and we started to interact with the Canadian government. And it all culminated with a program that they announced at the um, 
G7 uh, with uh, Minister Hodgson signing the agreement uh, with UCOR right on center stage at the event, which was uh, which was nice. And um, yeah, so we're off with a single production line in Canada for Samarium gadolinium, uh, thirty-six million dollars, twenty-six million from Medarcan, another ten million from FedDev uh, Ontario, and uh, it, it's a grant, a complete grant. So yeah, feeling good about it. Well, certainly shareholders are very happy with UCOR. And it's intriguing to me, Pat, that out of all of the recent news flow you've had, the most emails I have received has to do with your Hastings Technology Metals deal. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, you know, we've been dealing with Hastings for some time. Actually, we we interacted with them, well, probably two years ago. And um, they had a different management team. They had a different ownership structure at that time. And we were trying to get to that Hastings uh, material. We knew they needed a hydromet plant in order to make it available for processing uh, you know, at a refinery like Rapid SX does. But um, they were entwined a little bit with the Chinese at that point. And so we backed away. And with new ownership, um, that all went away. Uh, the announcement was made between um, uh, you know, Australia and the U.S., creating a, a, um, a really solid alliance, I think $8.5 billion in critical mineral uh, uh, you know, sharing. And Hastings, we've been dealing with them again most recently for the last six months, and we realized that now is the time to actually uh, take advantage of that agreement between Australia and um, the U.S., and also the, an agreement that was signed between Australia and Canada at the recent G7. So Hastings aligning with UCOR is an alignment of uh, Canadian technology, and it's alignment of um, U.S. manufacturing with Louisiana. So we're, we're moving quickly with Hastings to find a way to uh, hydromet their product and get it into play probably by 2027. We have other feedstock sources for 26. So in essence, you've become the West command center in the rare earth race. Would you say that that is correct? <laughs> the command center. Well, you know what, uh, as you know, Tracy, to build a supply chain, you've got to have nodes that actually connect. You can't have one-off MOUs that don't bring you a, a solution at the end of the day. So we're, we're doing quite well on the feedstock side. We're aligning with our technology, which is now very mature and, and moving to you know deployment in, in Louisiana for SMC number one and actually deployment in Canada for SMC number two. And then downstream, we have uh, people like Vacuum Schmelz and, and others that you'll be uh, hearing about that connect all the dots. So yeah, command center is get the job done. Command center is deliver a product and, and start to solve this problem of deficiencies in the supply chain, recreate the Western supply chain and we're making all that happen. So if that's the if that's the command center, then we'll, we'll take that title. Samarium and gadolinium. Those are two rare earths you don't hear a lot about. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about them? Well, yeah, Samarium and gadolinium, you know, the, the Samarium cobalt magnets are the uh, um, magnet of choice for the defense uh, system. The G7 countries use Samarium gadolinium uh, or Samarium cobalt magnets. And when you make a samarium cobalt magnet, you have samarium, of course, but you also have a sprinkle of gadolinium in there. All of it intended to give you a, 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 a keep a high magnetization, high temperature performance, and they definitely need that in the uh, the military applications. That um, you know, from submarines to F thirty five fighters. Um, so yeah, you don't hear a whole lot about it, but the the one thing that people should know is that samarium and gadolinium is one hundred percent controlled by China. And back in April, when they came out with their first wave of bans, Samarium and gadolinium were intensely in that group. And uh, we had been thinking uh, for a number of months that Samarium and gadolinium, based on our technology nimbleness, are two products that we should go after. So, um, yeah, we're, we're centered on a production line for Samarium and gadolinium only. And, and you know, uh, rare earths are found in the same chain in nature. They're all connected the same way. And Samarium and gadolinium are actually a chemical split. So when you're processing out uh, samarium gadolinium, it's actually a chemical split that allows the two products to sort of make the way to the surface. So if you can get there quickly to that split and you can do it with, um, um, you know, support with the customers that want to use it and they need it and they have to stockpile it. And the Western world is at uh, in, in a very vulnerable position as Forbes re re uh, reported lately. Uh, it's a smart place to be and, and we're pursuing that. So for all of your shareholders, what should we be looking forward to in the next quarter? Well, in the next quarter, um, some of these um, feedstock arrangements that we've been talking about that, uh, like Hastings, for example, that are in a um, uh, MOU style arrangement, will be moving to defin definitive parameters. So you'll see some definitive coming together there. 
downstream, the agreements that we've announced that are MOU-ish, like with VAC and EVAC, uh, will in fact uh, turn to a definitive agreement. As I mentioned, we had uh, accelerated that um, MOU announcement for the G7 specifically. Uh, there'll be more uh, build-out plans being reported, build-out for Louisiana for our heavy earth processing. There'll be build-out plans now for Canada uh, because we're actually building a, um, a um, well, not building, it'll be a brownfield facility for Samarium gadolinium in Canada. And so, our, so everyone's clear too, the, um, the current uh, commercial demonstration facility we have in Kingston, that's for developing process flow sheets, it's for research, it's for testing feedstocks. It, it is not where the production of Samarium gadolinium will take place. Samaritan so gadolinium will take place sort of on campus in a similar uh, uh, brownfield building, but uh, you want to keep your production away from your development work, and and you'll hear about that as well. And other uh, other connectivity in the supply chain node that uh, you know U.S. government, Canadian government, there's more opportunity there. Uh, the two governments are working together, which is really nice to see, and uh, there could be some more news flow in that area as well. Well, that certainly sounds enticing. Can you comment on U.S. and Canadian relations, Pat? You know, I, you, I think you've asked me that question before, and I indicated that it was actually quite good. And, uh, and I still say that. It, it's very good. When it comes to critical minerals and the uh, assuredness of safety and supply for the West, uh, we, um, we definitely see that cooperation between the Canada and, and U.S. There's a lot of connectivity. There's a lot of conversation back and forth. Uh, the fact that we, um, the Canada took on the assignment of Samarium gadolinium was welcome news to the U.S. because they know they need that for their um, defense mechanism. And for Canada to step up with a grant to handle that was welcome news to the U.S. They're focused on heavy earth and a few others that were processing in Louisiana and together, you know, they're looking at supply chain solutions. So very good. For those of you interested in finding out more about UCOR, please go to the following website, and Pat, as always, thank you so much for the update. Thank you, Tracy.